now that we know what it takes to make a triangle, in that the sum of the two short sides has to be longer than the third side in order for the triangle to exist, now let's talk about the relationship between the sides and the angles of the triangle. So given the triangles above, what do you notice about the location of the shortest side relative to the smallest angle? In every case, let's look at, here's our smallest angle, 40 degrees, and then our shortest side, 18, 18, and 12.3. So that's our shortest side. Then we've got our smallest angle, 36.9 right here, and our shortest side is 3. <clears throat> our smallest angle is 24 degrees, and our shortest side is 6. So what you should notice is that in every case, the angle, the smallest angle, is opposite of the shortest side. Opposite of the shortest side. So, for instance, let's look at this with names, right? So, JL is the shortest side, is opposite of K. And that's in triangle JKL, because I want you to see like how the letters go together. In triangle ABC, um, AB, side AB, is across from this angle K, angle C. So ABC, we have AB is across from C. And then triangle DOG, our shortest side, OG, is across from angle D, DOG. So just kind of pay attention to that. That's what it means with opposite. Okay, what do you notice about the location of the longest side relative to the largest angle? Well, in this case, notice that we have two angles that are the same and we have two sides are the same. That's not accidental. Okay, these go together across from each other. Here is my largest angle, 53, oh, excuse me, nope, 90 degrees. <laughs> and the longest side is 5. That's my right triangle and the 97 degrees and 15 centimeters. That's my longest. So again, notice that just like with our smallest sides being across from our shortest, our smallest angles, we also have in triangle JKL, we have our longest side, which is LK and uh, JK. They are opposite of angle L and angle J. Okay, in triangle, that one's tricky because it has two, so let's look at the rest of them. In triangle ABC, um, the longest side is AC, and it is opposite of angle B. And then um, triangle DOG, the longest side, which is OD, is across from the biggest angle, angle G. So that always works. That will always happen that way. Small sides are across from large angles, and long sides are across from large, or small sides across from small angles, large sides across from large angles. If I take um, these two sticks right here, and I create a teeny tiny angle right here, then it is going to take a shorter stick to make this triangle, right? Versus if I take and make this angle bigger, and create another one, if I make the angle bigger, same situation, right? Except for this time, I make this bigger, it's going to take a much longer piece to make that triangle exist. So my two sides, these two sides were the same, but you can see that when the angle is smaller, this angle is smaller than this angle, that it takes, that the small angle is across from the short side, the large angle is across from the long side. Okay, just to give you a visual of what that could look like. <clears throat> so let's get some practice then. Um, putting these in order. Order the angles of each triangle from smallest to largest. So first let's look at our sides from smallest to largest. Our smallest side is RS. 
our medium side is QR and our longest side is QS. It doesn't matter. You can say SR, RQ, SQ. The order that you say those in doesn't matter. Now, what side is across from RS? I'm lining these up because I want you to see if that's RS, the angle that it is across from is Q. So the smallest angle has to be angle Q. QR is this side right here. It is directly opposite of angle S. So notice QRS, QRS. And then QS is opposite of R. Notice every pair has a Q, an R, and an S. So our smallest angle is angle Q, our medium angle is angle S, and our largest angle is angle R. Now I can do all of that without knowing a single angle measurement. I just know that whatever they are, they're going to be in that order from smallest to largest. In this case, this one I don't have a picture, so you can either draw a picture and label your sides, or you can look at these pieces. So we have triangle W, Y, X, W. So X, W is eight, Y, W is 10, Y, X is 15. So my shortest side is X, W. Well, if that's my shortest side, the one variable, the one side, the one vertex I didn't use, excuse me, is angle Y. So angle Y has to be the smallest. Y, W, the only letter I didn't use is X, so that has to be my next angle in line. And then Y, X, the only letter I haven't used is W, so angle W then has to be the largest. If you go on and you draw a picture, any generic triangle will do. We don't care about whether it is to scale. We just want to see what it looks like. X, W is 8, Y, W is 10, Y, X is 15. So you can see I have my shortest side is X, W, and it is across from Y and so on. So then you can go with the rest of them. So if you need help, if you need to see what it looks like, then draw the picture. If you don't have one, pretty much in geometry, you can always draw a picture. All right, so order the sides. So this time I gave you the angles and I want you to put the sides in order from shortest to longest. So again, let's look at our angles. So our smallest angle is angle X, our medium angle is angle V, and our largest angle is angle W. So if I put those in order, right, then I'm going to use whichever letters I didn't use. So for X, what I didn't use is WV. Now, just so you can see it on the picture, right, here's your smallest angle, here's your shortest side. Notice that they're not connected, okay? V, if V is my medium size angle, then the other two letters, WX, is my medium side. And then if W is my largest angle, then the other two letters, VX, are my is my longest side. So this is the answer, right? If I want to order the sides, I gave you the angles, so you name the sides. Sides are named with two points. Now in this one, we run into a problem because we don't have everything that we need. We need all three angles to be able to tell what happens. If you draw a triangle, which is always a good idea, D, E, F, D is 32 degrees, E is 73 degrees. Well, in order to be able to tell what the sides, how the sides order up, we need to know how big F is. Well, don't forget, the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. That means that this angle F is 75 degrees. Add 32 and 73, subtract that from 180, and you get that angle F is 75. That means that my smallest angle is angle D, my medium angle is angle E, my largest angle is angle F. I think it's it helps to see your angles in order so that then you can do your sides in order. So it's D, so I need the other two, EF. It's E, so I need the other two, DF. And it's F, so I need the other two, DE. It doesn't matter, you can FE, FD, ED, doesn't matter, but they have to be these two letters, these two letters, and these two letters. Now, this next one is tricky. Okay, because here I have all these triangles. I have triangles that are put together. Okay, um, And so what we're going to do is we're going to have to pick a starting place. So if you're missing, here's one helpful hint. If you're missing angles, you need to find all your missing angles. So you need to do that first. So first I want to determine the longest side. So first let's look at this and see who's got the longest side just based on the angles. Now remember, 
I can have longer sides, right? So like this can be a 30 degree angle with them that big, but then also this can be a 30 degree angle with them that big. So it only helps us, it doesn't tell us how long they are, but it tells us which is longest and which is shortest or shorter than the other ones. So let's find all the missing angles. So 52 and 78, add those together, subtract that from 180. You find out that ABD is 50 degrees. And then 58 and 48, subtracted from 180, gives you that CBD is 74. Now, in order to find the largest or the longest um, side, determine the longest side, what you're going to do is start with the largest angle. So in the whole picture, the largest angle in the whole picture is 78. So right now, I am only going to look at that triangle. Okay, so in that triangle, right now, based on what I have, the longest side is DB. So according to triangle ADB, DB is the biggest. Okay, so according to triangle, I'm just going to write this down so you can see it. According to triangle ADB, DB is the biggest. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to ask that triangle that's there sitting next to it if it is if it is its longest side too. Because that's the longest side of this one, but what's the longest side of this one? Well, now we just look at that one. Well, the biggest angle of this triangle is this 74 degree angle, which means that its longest side is DC. That means that DC is longer than DB. Even though DB was the longest for this triangle up here, it's still shorter than this one because this is the longest side of this bottom triangle. So for triangle, <clears throat> so triangle DBC overrides it and says, no, DC is the shortest or the longest, excuse me, so DC wins. So DC is the longest of all of the triangles, of all the sides of all the triangles, that one is the longest. So now let's back up and let's look at the shortest side. What happens if it's the shortest side? Well, if it's the shortest side, you start with the smallest angle. The smallest angle in the whole picture is 48 degrees. So 48 degrees, there's my smallest. I'm going to jump across to the other side to that the other two letters, right? So in this case then, triangle, see, in DBC, that's its shortest side. What was the longest side of the, the triangle above it is the shortest side of the triangle below it. So this triangle says that DB is its shortest side. So since they share the side, we also have to confer with this triangle up top and we have to ask it. Well, its smallest angle is 50, which means that while DB is the shortest side of this triangle, it is not the shortest. This one has another shorter triangle, a, a, a shorter side, and it is DA. So in that case, then DA wins out as the shortest side. Okay? <clears throat> so again, when you have missing angles, we have to start with our missing angles. So we can find that this angle is 82. This angle is 60, and this angle is 42, because the angles, the sum of the angles of the triangle equals to 180. All right, so I want the longest side. Longest side means start with largest angle. So look at all the angles on all the triangles and find the largest angle. So the largest angle of all of them is 82. Of all these different nine angles, 82 is the largest. So we're going to start there. And you say, okay. So for this triangle right here, its longest side is KM. But KM also belongs to this triangle. So now we have to go and confer with this triangle and say, okay, what's your longest side? So this triangle, KML, says, well, that's not my longest side. My longest side, which is across from my largest angle, is KL. So now KL is winning. But KL also belongs to this triangle, so now we need to check this triangle. So this triangle says, well, my largest angle is 76 degrees, which means my longest side is NL. So what that means is that KM is smaller than KL, which is smaller than NL. So the longest side of all of them is NL, because we ended up at a place to stop. 
Now, if at some point, right, if J, if this triangle said this was my longest side, and if this triangle said that this was my longest side, if they agree on it, then you can stop. That's the longest side, okay? If you had said, is that my longest side? This one's my longest side. This one's my longest side. If this one had agreed that that was the longest side, then we would have said KL. It's whoever, whatever they hit, wherever they land that last one that we asked, okay? But we have to check because sometimes these two can agree before this one. That's why we can't just start on one. We didn't know it was going to end up here. It could have gone the other direction. So we didn't know where it was going to be because that's the medium. That's the middle size largest angle. So we wouldn't have known where to start. Now what about the shortest side? The shortest side we start with the smallest angle. And the smallest angle of the bunch is 42. So 42, that smallest that smallest side, right, that smallest angle is across from its shortest side. So the shortest side of that triangle, the shortest side of this triangle, we're just looking at that one, is that. But it's shared with that triangle, so now we have to ask it. That one says, well, no, my shortest angle, my smallest angle means that my shortest side is MK. So see, the smallest side of this triangle is the biggest side of this triangle. So that's my shortest side. So now, okay, well, they don't agree. They don't agree. So now we have to ask this last one. Well, its smallest angle is 44. So it means its shortest side is JN. So they just kept getting shorter and shorter as they went across. And so the final shortest side then would be JN. Like I said, if we had two triangles that were together here, and if this one said, this one's my longest side, and this one said, that's also my longest side, then that would be the one that you would do. You would name that side that's in the middle. So if they both agree, when you have two triangles that agree, you would say that's their longest side. So in summary then, <clears throat> the smallest angle is across from the shortest side, and the largest angle is across from the longest side.